a quotient filter, introduced by Bender et al. in 2011, is a space-efficient probabilistic data structure used to test whether an element is a member of a set. A query will elicit a reply specifying either that the element is definitely not in the set or that the element is probably in the set. The former result is definitive, i.e., the test does not generate false negatives. But with the latter result there is some probability, epsilon, of the test returning element is in the set, when in fact the element is not present in the set. There is a trade-off between epsilon, the false positive rate, and storage size. Increasing the filter's storage size reduces epsilon. Other AMQ operations include insert and optionally delete. The more elements are added to the set, the larger the probability of false positives. A typical application for quotient filters, and other AMQ filters, is to serve as a proxy for the keys in a database on disk. As keys are added to or removed from the database, the filter is updated to reflect this. Any lookup will first consult the fast quotient filter, then look in the database only if the quotient filter reported the presence of the key. If the filter returns absence, the key is known not to be in the database without any disk accesses having been performed. A quotient filter has the usual AMQ operations of insert and query. In addition it can also be merged and resized without having to rehash the original keys. This property benefits certain kinds of log-structured merge trees. Algorithm description. The quotient filter is a compact hash table. Cleary defines a compact hash table as one in which the table entries contain only a portion of the key plus some additional metadata bits. These bits are used to deal with the case when distinct keys happen to hash to the same table entry. By way of contrast, other types of hash tables that deal with such collisions by linking to overflow areas are not compact because the overhead due to linkage can exceed the storage used to store the key. In a quotient filter a hash function generates a p-bit fingerprint. The R least significant bits is called the remainder while the Q equals P R most significant bits is called the quotient. Hence the name quotienting the hash table has two Q slots. For some key D which hashes to the fingerprint DH, let its quotient be DQ and the remainder be drive. QF will try to store the remainder in slot DQ, which is known as the canonical slot. However the canonical slot might already be occupied because multiple keys can hash to the same fingerprint, a hard collision, or because even when the keys' fingerprints are distinct they can have the same quotient, a soft collision. If the canonical slot is occupied then the remainder is stored in some slot to the right. As described below, the insertion algorithm ensures that all fingerprints having the same quotient are stored in contiguous slots. Such a set of fingerprints is defined as a run. Note that a run's first fingerprint might not occupy its canonical slot if the run has been forced right by some run to the left. However a run whose first fingerprint occupies its canonical slot indicates the start of a cluster. The initial run and all subsequent runs comprise the cluster, which terminates at an unoccupied slot or the start of another cluster. The three additional bits are used to reconstruct a slot's fingerprint. They have the following function. Is underscore occupied is set when a slot is the canonical slot for some key stored in the filter. Is underscore continuation is set when a slot is occupied but not by the first remainder in a run. Is underscore shifted is set when the remainder in a slot is not in its canonical slot. The various combinations have the following meaning. Is underscore occupied is underscore continuation is underscore shifted 000. Empty slot 001. Slot is holding start of run that has been shifted from its canonical slot. 010. Not used. 011. Slot is holding continuation of run that has been shifted from its canonical slot. 100. Slot is holding start of run that is in its canonical slot. 101. Slot is holding start of run that has been shifted from its canonical slot. Also the run for which this is the canonical slot exists but is shifted right. 110. Not used. 
1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-
The runs for quotients 1 and 2 now comprise a cluster. In state 3 element A has been added. Its quotient is 1. We assume R less than BR so the remainders in slots 1 through 4 must be shifted. Slot 2 receives BR and is marked as a continuation and shifted. Slot 5 receives A and is marked as shifted. The runs for quotients 1, 2 and 4 now comprise a cluster, and the presence of those three runs in the cluster is indicated by having slots 1, 2 and 4 being marked as occupied. Cost, performance. Cluster length Bender argues that clusters are small. This is important because lookups and inserts require locating the start and length of an entire cluster. If the hash function generates uniformly distributed fingerprints then the length of most runs is O and it is highly likely that all runs have length. O where M is the number of slots in the table. Probability of false positives Bender calculates the probability of a false positive in terms of the hash table's remainder size and load factor. Recall that a p-bit fingerprint is partitioned into a qubit quotient, which determines the table size of m equals 2 q slots, and a r-bit remainder. The load factor is the proportion of occupied slots n to total slots m. Then, for a good hash function, is approximately the probability probability of a hard collision space performance a quotient filter requires 10 to 25 percent more space than a comparable bloom filter but is faster because each access requires evaluating only a single hash function application quotient filters are amqs and as such provide many of the same benefits as bloom filters a large database, such as web table may be composed of smaller subtables each of which has an associated filter. Each query is distributed concurrently to all subtables. If a subtable does not contain the requested element, its filter can quickly complete the request without incurring any I.O. Quotient filters offer two benefits in some applications. Two quotient filters can be efficiently merged without affecting their false positive rates. This is not possible with Bloom filters. A few duplicates can be tolerated efficiently and can be deleted. The space used by quotient filters is comparable to that of Bloom filters. However quotient filters can be efficiently merged within memory without having to reinsert the original keys. This is particularly important in some log-structured storage systems that use the log-structured merge tree or LSM tree. The LSM tree is actually a collection of trees but which is treated as a single key value store. One variation of the LSM tree is the sorted array merge tree or SAMT. In this variation, SAMT's component trees are called wannabe trees. Each wannabe tree has an associated quotient filter. A query on the SAMT is directed at only select wannabe trees as evidenced by their quotient filters. The storage system in its normal operation compacts the SAMT's wannabe trees, merging smaller wannabe trees into larger ones and merging their quotient filters. An essential property of quotient filters is that they can be efficiently merged without having to reinsert the original keys. Given that for large datasets the wannabe trees may not be in memory, accessing them to retrieve the original keys would incur many IOs. By construction the values in a quotient filter are stored in sorted order. Each run is associated with a specific quotient value, which provides the most significant portion of the fingerprint. The runs are stored in order and each slot in the run provides the least significant portion of the fingerprint. So, by working from left to right, one can reconstruct all the fingerprints and the resulting list of integers will be in sorted order. Merging two quotient filters is then a simple matter of converting each quotient filter into such a list. Merging the two lists and using it to populate a new larger quotient filter. Similarly, we can halve or double the size of a quotient filter without rehashing the keys since the fingerprints can be recomputed using just the quotients and remainders.